Hi guys, welcome back to the channel for another video on Marvel Contest the Champions. Today we're going to be spilling the tea and my voice is going to be going from very high to very low due to the fact that I have a sore throat. That and because uh, my testicles are dropping and now I'm becoming a real man. Go me! But in all seriousness, the community has a lot to say when it comes to this new edition. So in conjunction with the release of Act 6.2, there's going to be more class requirements storage requirements that may be a case it will slow down the progression of a lot of players at the moment act 6.2 is scheduled for a june or a mid-june release date and it still comes with a level of criticism that i always have when it comes to beta testing and who is actually testing this out who and what are the platforms or the peoples that are indeed being tested so for example is someone of my standing seaton standing or somebody else one that has a lot of money that can play into the game to increase their roster quickly, that may be in a better alliance, and at the same time, those that maybe could just scrape through this. Will it give a proper representation of the ability to get through this content? That is something that would be really good to understand when it comes to Kabam testing this out. For example, I do not possess a skill or a mystic base six star champion, and is the question, would that cause an issue with doing some of the content? Well, let's have a look. Kabam state that each quest has 10 paths, four class or rarity gates, and six paths that have no gates. This means that you'll be able to do about 50% exploration of chapter two without running into any of these gates. That's positive initially for completion. All of the class gates in chapter two will lead you down a path where you have class advantage. Okay, that's some sort of positive. They are designed to be easier when you achieve the requirements. You'll be able to see which gate requirements are present from champion selection screen and can tap on the gate from anywhere on the quest map to check requirements. So from that kind of impression, does it seem to the player that this is a good idea? In a nutshell, yes, but there are specific criticisms that we need to have a look at from the community and as well my own, which isn't really great for a lot of players and a lot of players are kind of like having a little bit of backlash over the subject but let's continue on here are the quest and the requirements so what do you think about this like the fact is if you don't have strong champions you are now looking to find better champions to rank up and just having your roster so let's face it if you've only got three mystic champions and they're complete rubbish and I say complete rubbish meaning like, well, you're limited on resources. You could probably only get them to about rank four because maybe your tier two alpha stash isn't that high. So what this does, it kind of prolongs and kind of extends your grind unless you're willing to put in an extensive amount of money in order to get them up quickly. So I'm talking like special 4th of July offers. So I've got rank up materials. I'm going to have to do more of this content, that content. I'm going to have to be in a more competitive alliance to get better resources. A lot of people might have to change the way they play in order to get themselves a extensively improved roster for doing this content. And also with Act 6, it does seem that Kabam are trying to say the, to the community and what they've been trying to reiterate for a long time is slow down. Make sure that you're slowing down your progress. Don't rush, kind of eliminating the rush culture when it comes to grinding out Marvel Contest of Champions. And I think that's the problem because people are going too ham they burn out and when you burn out it means that you lose favor and your love for the game so they're trying to make sure that you're taking your time on your grind maybe focusing on other content in the game to then come back over to it reiterating time and time again this is permanent content but this isn't the thing that's fired up the community and it's basically with this line here saying that the availability of five and six star shards are meaning that players are making quicker progression and therefore some stuff with like having champion requirements or class requirements or gating requirements will be a lot more simpler not really if you think about it if you're able to apply in a good amount of money with the drop rates of cavalier crystals being quite favorable especially for the first couple of weeks tinfoil hat mm, uh, then you would say that hey well a lot more of those type of champion classes and storage ratings are dropping for the player base at the end of the day you will feel differently to how kabam feel about the state of six star shards and five star shards being available and the question has been floating around the forums about increasing of rewards for a little while and is that something that the player base would like to see in order to really feel that that was correct against Kabam's statement? But as we know, it's been in the last year, Uncollected got that slight improvement where they increased the amount of five-star shards. I think six-star shards got entered in or more of them. 
and as well we had tier 5 basics being added in and as well I think a slight increase in the extent of tier 2 alpha being put in as well and at that time I was looking at stuff like variant 2 and kind of thinking well with the standard variant like should we be receiving more 6 star shards from this but maybe this would be a good time for Kabam to consider the aspect of a 5 star basic arena and maybe a slight improvement to things like Crystal Corn Cornucopia to just add in maybe one more that allows you to get a bit more when it comes to shards. That would be something that I think a lot of players would like their Sundays, just have that little bit of an extra grind going into the Monday. And not to mention solo events as well as alliance-based events with the three days, not really receiving a huge amount of kind of like buff or kind of super improvement with how many shards you take home. But let's look at what everyone else thinks about this and get to a conclusion point. Joke1004 basically says that, okay, so the statement's there, what Kabam has said, and does there provide more of a, a bigger gap between those that are able to spend in the game and also get those, those champions? The answer is yes, and at the same time, looking at the fact that, well, have the rewards actually improved? And they kind of feel, Kabam, I think, feel that it's a case of, yes, they are giving back and people are receiving those great rewards, but to others, maybe not feeling that that's the case. There's a point made by Ace03 that I do like, and first of all, he copies the, uh, the the post that was put by Kaban Mike back a long time ago when they were thinking about these things, but also kind of touching on the aspects of like why do they say that five stars and six star shards are more available? It depends again what the Kaban uh, factor into. They say okay, we've definitely made them a lot available. One thousand six star shards counts as more av available to players. Um, oh, having people have five thousand five star shards that technically means in an event that's more available depends what they define it and we define it but the ending point and this is this is the one that i, I like the most he says i bet that path that requires four six stars will have a bunch of enemies and nodes that require a lot of utility which obviously then points to the six star rosters if my roster of my champions is not going to be man enough for the job then what do i do do i wait to rank to them do i wait for better champions to then tackle that what will be the lay of the land? This then goes back to that point I made towards the start of the video where I said that who are these people? What are their test parameters? What kind of rosters are we experiencing for this particular beta test of Act 6.2? For example, of comparison, if you're watching this video and going, I've got three six stars, do I classify as a veteran based player? And at the same time, will I be able to do this? Well, you won't be able to do a certain part of the quest. Me and myself, I've got eight with a potential ninth coming very shortly, six stars. Will there be a chance I could do this? Yes. Will I have two outstanding champions for the job? Yes. Do I have any poison immunity? Maybe one or two. So if there's a no for that, then I'm scuffed. The same thing happens with different champions. Will I have the roster that will be man enough to take this on? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know just yet. And obviously when those nodes come through, we can get an idea. But it's just getting that understanding of how and who and the parameters of the roster going up against the content for the beta test. At the moment looking through, it seems to be a lot of critical to actually positive based responses to this. And the key thing really being the availability of five and six shards, six star shards based on the statement that Kabam have made. And the second thing being the extent of resources that will be required to get up champions. Because it was saying that you need coming up against a six star champion that's awakened overly stacked rank two rank three rank five whatever if that's on a really difficult node and you have a really weak ass champion going up against it then you're gonna feel like what's the point and as i said it does go back to that age old thing that because Kabam are pushing this permanent content it's all about taking its time it is positive to slow down the progression of people just to kind of enjoy the game a bit more and not be about that rush culture but at the same time it is difficult to change that kind of perspective if people want to get in content really quickly get it done then that may be what people want to do but if that's the case there's a slower progression route then what does it really do for players but in any case now i throw this over to you what are your thoughts on this particular event do you feel that this is a bit too much for you do you feel that this now slows down your progression do you think the slowing of progression is a positive thing, negative thing? All the things that we discussed, your thoughts in the comment section below. And I'll pick this up on Marvel Contest of Champions Weekend just to kind of get your thoughts from the comment sections on this. And just leave you with this meme here. So basically, I really hope that things in June step up. All the bugs are really addressed and fixed. And I wish that this is done as soon as possible. And for a lot of players, they want more resources and more rewards based on the command statement. They're a bit... Mm. 
But like I said, thoughts in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button and subscribe for more Marvel Contest of Champions based content. Make sure to drop into our live stream today at 1900 hours GMT. And also subscribe to my Stormbreaker channel where we're going to start with doing some PUBG Mobile and then we're going to be moving on to different types of games in the coming months. But thanks so much for watching. I should catch you in the next one. Bye bye for now.